Can you say amen? amen? All right, I'll see you then. Let's look at the word, Galatians 6, 1 through 5. Galatians 6, 1 through 5. Now, I'm going to read this, but we're going to bounce all around, and then we're going to come back to this at the very end, the Lord say the same. Galatians 6, 1 through 5, brothers and sisters, if someone is caught in a sin, you who live by the Spirit should restore that person, what? But watch yourselves, or you also may, what? Carry each other's burdens, grab that, and in this way you will do what? Fulfill the law of? If anyone thinks they are something when they are not, they what? Each one should do what? Test their own actions. Don't be coming at me. Don't be coming at somebody else. What is it? Check yourself. Check yourself. Then they can take pride in what? Alone. Without doing what? Comparing themselves to... That levels the playing field, doesn't it? What Paul is essentially saying is, take a good look at yourself in the mirror. For each one should do what? Carry their own load. Father, let the words of my mouth and meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, you are my strength and you are my redeemer. Bless your word in this place. Enlarge it in me. Turn my lips of clay and the portals of heaven that you pour out upon your people the very seed of your word. Have your way. Use me, God, from the crown of my head to the sole of my feet, that I might be holy before you and your people. Use me that I will speak with clarity, power, and might. This we pray in Jesus' name. Thank you, God. And amen. As you take your seat, can you say the secret, the secret. Service. service? The secret service defends the president with their lives. They swear an oath to do so. What if we were as committed to serving others as they are? The multiplication of our efforts would be a force multiplier. It would be enormous. Muhammad Ali once said, service to others is the rent you pay for your room in heaven. When I was in the military, one of the Air Force core values was service before self. Martin Luther King Jr. said, life, listen, life's most persistent and surest question is, what are you doing for others? That is the question that is raised in the text. Paul picks up that question with an answer to the small Asia Minor church in the mountains of what we now call Turkey. In Galatians 6 and 2, let me read it again. Carry each other's burdens, and in this way you will fulfill the law of Christ. Now, the interesting thing about that verse is it is accompanied by verses 3 through 5, which seem in some way contradictory. If anyone thinks that they are something when they are not, they deceive themselves. Each one should test their own actions. Then they can take pride in themselves alone without comparing themselves to someone else. For each one, here it is, should carry their own load. Which seems contradictory to two, which says carry each other's burdens. The Greek of what Paul is saying is Helping others does not mean you help them to the point that they become helpless. He is saying, share the burden. Don't take the burden from someone, but share the burden. Help them with their burden. Come alongside of them. 
Barnabas would put it in another way. He would say, encourage them. The Holy Spirit, the paraclete, the one who comes alongside of us, would be the one that says, that is how we help, by coming alongside. I'm reminded of when I was a child, a young teenager, and I used to work in tobacco, in the tobacco fields. As you know, I'm from North Carolina. And uh, working in the tobacco fields, you would crop tobacco. It was a hard job, but I loved it, actually, because I got paid good money. I got a dollar fifty cent an hour. Fifteen dollars at the end of the day. Now, I know some of you are saying, now, oh, my God, you, you know, that ain't a lot of money. Well, then, when you were a teenager uh, back then, that was quite a bit of money. And, uh, you know, I could get a couple of pair of jeans with that. But in working in tobacco, being as tall as I am, you would bent over, and when you crop tobacco, you would first start at the bottom leaves and work your way up. By the end of the summer, you would be at the very top of the stalk. But at the very beginning, you had to work and get what they call the lug nuts. You would get down at the very bottom, and then being as tall as I am, that would be very difficult, and I would fall behind. My brother who's with the Lord now, Ricky, was shorter than I am. Everybody indeed is smaller than me, shorter than me and my family. And Ricky was faster than me. Ricky would be far ahead of me. And as he got ready to come back and bring his arm load of tobacco leaves and put them in the truck, that in the middle of the truck aisle, just making the picture here, I know it might be hard for you to kind of visualize, he would notice that his brother Jeff was still far behind. And therefore, he would crop his way all the way back in my row to catch me up so that I would not be behind. In other words, he would share the burden. He would share the burden because... Uh, he was knowing that, um, um, that if I did not keep up, it was a good chance that we would get fired and we were a good team. And he saw that my success was his success and vice versa. So it is in our walk with the Lord. We must understand that we are all in this thing, what? That if somebody's getting a breakthrough, then I want to make sure that everybody gets a breakthrough. If, if, if someone is moving forward in God, then I want to make sure that everybody is moving forward in God. So therefore, we work together, and my brother and I became well known for our ability to crop tobacco. Together, we were a force multiplier. We were like the secret service to each other. We were dedicated to each other, serving each other. But how do we do this in the church? I want to suggest to you, I want to teach to you five things that will help us understand what this whole thing is about when we say GPS, God positioning me to serve, and this morning, the secret service. The first thing is this. One of the most difficult things to do in life is to put others before yourself. It's, a, it's not as easy as we articulate or say when we're in the flow of church. Our natural tendency is to let Maslow's hierarchy of needs kick in. Maslow's hierarchy of needs starts at the very uh, psychological basic level, and that is I have my psychological needs or my feeling needs must be met first, and then the second need that must be met is my physical needs. Now notice that we always, we're going to put our emotions first. We're going to put how I feel what? Come on, I'm going to put my hunger and my desires what? The only way you reverse that is by the help of Jesus Christ. You do not naturally come out of the womb saying, I'm going to help everybody else at the expense of myself. You do not come out of the womb saying that I'm going to regard your feelings above my own feelings. 
The typical response is, I'm going to make sure that I am taken care of first. But you cannot serve others if that is your approach. This does not happen until you realize I have to sacrifice something. It's going uphill when you help others. It requires you to be selfless and not self-centered. It requires you to be other focus. There's a book that I have and it's all, it's, it deals with uh, emotional quotient. And, and I like that book because it tells you and teaches you how then you then process your feelings with regard to other people's feelings. And that your feelings are not in a chasm by themselves, but they are now connected to the community around you. And then you have to then regard others even as you regard your own feelings. David said, Lord, how can I give you something that doing something for someone does not cost me anything? When you decide that you're going to help somebody else, I'm here to tell you it's going to cost you. And if it does not cost you, I would argue, are you really helping somebody else? If it did not pull something out of you, if it did not take some time from you, if it did not take some talent or treasure from you, did you really, did you feel it? Did you feel it? Second Samuel says this. I love this. It says 24, 24. But the king replied to Aaron, no, I insist on paying you for it. I will not sacrifice to the Lord my God burnt offerings that cost me nothing. This is how Paul put it. In other words, in helping other people. Listen, Romans 12 and 3. For by the grace given me, I say to every one of you, do not think of yourself what? than you ought, but rather think of yourselves, what? With sober judgment in accordance with the faith God has distributed to each of you. I, I, I love Philippians 2, 3 through 4, how Philippians 2, 3 through 4 puts it. Don't push your way to the front. Don't sweet talk your way to the top. Put yourself aside and help others get ahead. Don't be obsessed with getting your own advantage. Forget, come on class. Forget your, come on class. Come on, I want you all to stand and see that and say that behind that mask. Come on, I want you to stand and say that because I think that's very, very critical for you to get that. Forget who? How long? To do what? At some point, you got to put yourself aside. At some point, you've got to say, look, this thing is not just about me. You may be seated. Put others before yourself. Here's the second thing. Jesus requires service to be great. He requires service to be great. Matthew 20, 25 through 26, it says this, Jesus called them together and said, you know that the rulers of the Gentiles lord it over them and their high officials exercise authority over them. Not so with you. Instead, whoever wants to become what? Among you do what? Must do what? In order to be great? then I must understand that I must serve what? MLK Jr. puts it this way. He interprets it this way. If a man is called to be a street sweeper, he should sweep streets even as Michelangelo painted or Beethoven composed music or Shakespeare wrote poetry. He should sweep streets so well that all the hosts of heaven and earth with pause to say here lived a great street sweeper who did his job well 
Greatness is not what you do, but how well you do it. Greatness is serving well. And when I decide to serve others, it gets God's attention. For if you do something unto the least of these. Now we measure greatness about how much stuff we have. Not how much stuff we give away. We measure how many toys we have. To determine how great we are. Can you then calculate how many people did you help? Here is the predicament of the body of Christ. And I'm not just talking about new life this morning. We find ourselves in this context called a pandemic. And it, by its very nature, causes us to regard others at a distance. By its nature, it tells us to be suspicious of others. I remember when it kicked off initially and we were all on lockdown. And I remember venturing out to the grocery store. And there was something that made me feel so uneasy as I walk past people. I don't know about you. No, 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 no. Can we just be honest just for a moment? I don't know about you, but, but in the initial stages and everything, when we didn't quite understand all of the things and how it could be transmitted, I, I wasn't quite sure. I'm, I'm, I'm not, yeah. Hey, over there. But the very nature of the pandemic caused us to wonder how do we then operate as Christians? Because the pandemic does not mean I am no longer a Christian. I'm on suspense or pause until it's over. I'm preaching better than you responding right now. What do I do with this thing? If the word tells me that the very nature of Christ's law is caught up in me serving other people. Jesus requires it. So I thought since that he requires it, I thought maybe we should go over some scripture that will help you know that I'm not just whistling in the wind. Let's walk through some word. Here's the third thing. Scripture requires us to help one another. Jesus says you're going to do it because it's a service. So let's just walk through some word. Because someone said greatness and great opportunities to help other is seldom comes, but small ones surround us every day. Romans 12 and 10 says this, be devoted to one another in love. Honor one another above yourselves. The 16th verse of that says, live in harmony with one another. Do not be proud, but be willing to do what? Associate with people of, of low position, of low esteem. Do not be conceited. 1 Thessalonians 5 and 11 says this, says therefore uh, encourage one another and build each other up. Just as, in fact, you are doing. Romans 15 and 7 says this, accept one another. Then, just as who? Accept it. We have no position to reject anybody. Who are you that you would reject somebody? Because of the color of their skin, or their politics, or their disposition, or the smell or the fact that they're homeless. Who are you? But by God's grace, there go you. First, here it is, Romans 15 and 7 says, accept one another as he accepted you. And Ephesians 4, 2 says this, uh, uh, be completely humble and gentle. Be patient, bearing what? 
in love. Ephesians 4.32, be kind and what? To who? Doing what? As. How can you withhold something he gave you freely? He didn't charge you for it. Now you charging everybody for it. He didn't charge you to be forgiven, but you have a list of things in which we then put before people before we would ever say, I forgive you. Why is that important? Because you will not help anybody you have not forgiven. You will not help anybody if you don't love. You will not help anybody if you see yourself as a little bit better than them. You will not help anybody if you regard yourself a little bit, just a twinge more spiritual than they. You will not help anybody if you say, well, you know what? I'm just wondering whether or not you are deserving of that. I'm preaching better than you responded. That's why he says those things. Because you will withhold your service to them. So, therefore, come on, we ain't done. Hebrews 3.13, but encourage one another daily as long as it is called today. Hebrews 10.24, Hebrews 10.24, and let us consider how we may what? Spur one another on toward love and what? 1 Peter 4, 9, offer hospitality to one another. What? I thought it was important that I just share the word with you. Because I don't want you to think that on this Sunday morning, I just thought that I was going to tell you to do something, and you do it because I said it. It's important that you do it because the word says it. Because it is required, you can see even new babes in Christ serve under dangerous conditions. What are you talking about? Here it is, the fourth thing is what I'm talking about. Nicodemus served Jesus. John 19, 38 through 42. I want you to look there. I want you to see this here. Something special is happening in this text, in this particular pericope. It says this, later, Joseph of Arimathea asked Pilate for the body of Jesus. Now, Joseph was a uh, disciple of Jesus, but um, secretly because he feared the Jewish leaders. With Pilate's permission, he came and do, did what? And took the body away. You see that? He was accompanied by who? Who was with him? Who was with him? Wow. The man who what? Had done what? And Jesus led him to Christ. He, he saved him, right? Nicodemus brought a mixture of myrrh and alloys, about 75 pounds. Taking Jesus' body, the two of them wrapped it with the spices in stripes and linen. This was in accordance with the Jewish burial custom. Without much regard to his safety and status, Nicodemus served Jesus after Jesus saved him. At great peril of both his status and his physical well-being, he then now serves Jesus because Jesus saved him. I might get caught and my status in the Jewish community will be at risk. But because I visited Jesus one night and I asked the question, how can a man be born again? Must he enter back into his mother's womb? And no, Jesus says, no, you are born of the spirit. Come to me. He's a babe. He ain't even got the Holy Ghost yet. He 
He's not even speaking in tongues yet. But somehow or another, he puts everything at risk to do what? Serve the body of Christ. Come on, let me, let me say it one more time. He puts everything at risk to do what? The body. Oh, you missed it, you missed it, you missed it. He does what? Serves the of Christ. So I press the question on this morning. Are you now serving the body of Christ? Nikki just got saved. Nick hadn't been saved long at all. How long have you been saved? You've been baptized in the Holy Ghost. You speak in tongues. Can you ask yourself the question this morning, how am I serving the body of Christ? Nick said, I am. We, we have something, we have something, we have something that is not only confronting uh, new life. This message is, and, and lately God has given me um, messages to the body of Christ. We have right now a um, situation by which the body of Christ must navigate this moment that we are in with respect to our walking with Christ. Because part of living for Christ is to serve. But if I am, and I am throwing no shade, I'm simply raising the question. How do I do that if I'm confined to my home? How do I do that if I then am somewhat restrictive in my movement? How do I do that? Do I wait until it's over? No, I cannot wait. Who knows when this thing is going to be over? I must put my faith and my walk in Christ on pause. No, I, I have to put myself, as the Secret Service does, I have to put myself at some risk for the body of Christ. It, it, I, I, I know it presses us life changes. When I study the text and when I study how we're going to flow for this month, it presses me. But there is nowhere in scripture that tells me press pause until pandemic over. So how do we navigate this moment? Here's the fifth thing. Remember Christ put you before himself. He bought you with a price. He bought me with a price and I ain't worth a nickel. And he bought you with a price, though you think you're more than that. So how, how do we navigate this? How do we get past this? This is what, this is what Philippians 2 and 6 says and 7 says this. I, I want you to get this. Who being in the very nature God did not consider equality with God something to be used to his own advantage. Rather, come on class, what does it say? 
He made himself by of what? Of what? Of what? A servant. He says, I will then do for you what I'm asking you to do for me. I will not ask of you something that I've not done for you. In every way, I've been tempted as you have been. And here is the check mark. Enter in thy good and faithful. Thy good and faithful. Thy good and faithful. Not bishop. Not pastor. Not worship pastor. Not first lady. Not ushers. Thy good and faithful. My ticket in is my service to him. That's, that's how he punches my ticket. Let me see what you've done. Let me go down the list. Let me, let me check. Let me, let me see. Let me see. Let me see. Oh. 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 Pandemic. Nothing. Pandemic. Prior to pandemic, we couldn't stop you. During, now I raise that question. I raise that question not to throw shade because I am working through this with you. I don't preach down, I preach to you and me. Ain't got time to preach down. I don't see myself as any better than anybody else. I'm a sinner saved by grace. Just like y'all. So I have to wonder how do I manage this moment? How do I serve in this moment? How does the church, how does the body of Christ, somebody better figure this out because the pandemic ain't going nowhere. Here's the application. Are you serving in the church? Are you serving in the community? Are you serving in your life group? Here is how we do this. And I've been praying about it. God, how can I minister the word and I don't give people handles to hold on to it? Then he came to me, he told me, sh shared with me, spoke to me. Let's visit one another. How can you visit one another? Let's get on the, um, the um, call center of the church with the uh, ministers and the elders whom I've charged to call everybody in this church. How about after worship? And this is a surprise team, so I need somebody at the table with a list. Because as the spirit was moving, I'm talking to God. And what God told me is to assign someone to be at the table at the worship to say, would you get on a team that the elders and the ministers and the deacons have and they've charged to call everybody on the roll of this church. Can we visit in a pandemic? We can. COVID-19 does not transmit over the phone. Can we just simply get ourselves together and show that we care about one another? We are a large church. You have no idea what somebody is going through right now. 
We will train you. We will have a script. We won't have you talking all off. We don't want you talking about gossip. Shut that down. All we want you to do is simply to call Brother Lewis and say, Brother Lewis, we love you. And I'm just reaching out to see how you're doing. Is there anything that we can do to serve you in this moment? Is, anybody, is that making any sense? Young adult ministry, can we do that? Can we do that as a church? No, I'm not preaching right now. I'm asking right now. If you're watching right now, can we do this? We have the systems in place. We have the strategy in place. But we cannot accept the fact that I cannot serve because there's a pandemic. It is unacceptable from him. It's not acceptable from God Almighty. Am I making any sense on this morning? It's not acceptable. He wants us to serve one another. So we will have somebody at the table. Just sign up, say, I'm in. You don't have to be a member of this church. I'm in. We will teach you. We will do this by the end of this month. We will touch bases with everybody in on the roll of this church. To simply ask the question, how are you? Are you okay? Is there a need that you have? No, we don't have a million dollars, but we do have prayer. Can we, by the end of the month, I'm going to have some community agencies here. As we were praying, as the Spirit of the Lord was moving, God was speaking to me. I want to have some community agencies here so that we can serve in the community. I just, it's more to it than just coming here. After the Holy Ghost moves and after we get up off of the carpet, he requires something of us. Am I making any sense? In this moment, God will look at new life and say they showed up. Am I making sense here? He, 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 he will look at new life and say, they showed up. That's it. That's it. This and I will close. Having grown up in the church all my life, one of the things that always bothered me about church, I'm sorry, I'm just being transparent. One thing that always bothered me about church is that we would come, we would enjoy the Lord. I came out of a, a dancing tradition. We are, we are very much a worship traditional. That's our culture. We worship, we worship the Lord, our hands raised. We're tearful. Sometimes we run around, but most of the time we are very worship. That's the culture. Every church has a culture. It's not one right and the other wrong. It's not. I came up in a culture where you dance. The demonstrative uh, showing of God's Holy Ghost in the moment was people would dance in the spirit. That's, the, that's how I grew up, right? And one of the things that would always bother me is that we would dance in the spirit, but then leave and nothing outside of the walls were impacted by our dancing. And I determined, God, if you ever permit me to be in a position where I could exert influence to change that, I will do my level best to do so. If you want to then say, and you're watching right now, Bishop, I'm in. 
God has positioned me to serve. I'll just call a person. Give me five people to call. I'll call them by the end of the month. Give me three people to call. I'll call them by the end of the month. Give me two people to call. I'll, I'll go down the list. I won't act up. I will say what I need to say and hang up. Am I, come on, church. Oh, no, 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 no. We, we got to grab a hold of what the Spirit of the Lord is saying right now. If you're in, stand on your feet. I'll take a person. I'll call somebody. I'll take, I'll take this script. This isn't something that was planned. I will tell you our worship services are planned out. This wasn't planned. This came to me as the spirit was moving. Because you know typically, typically when the spirit moves like that, I will come to the pulpit. But, I, but God was talking and speaking to me. Because I knew what he was saying for us. If you say, you know what, I, I'm not into calling people, that ain't my, that ain't my flow, that's fine. Will you then serve in some capacity? The end of the month, we're doing a harvest festival. We need some people to just hand out candy. Just hand out candy. That's all you have to do, just stand up and hand out candy. Will you serve? Will you serve? We need somebody to greet somebody at the door. We cannot wait until the pandemic is over. Perhaps you are a prayer. Would you pray? Would you join Jan? Uh, hold your hand up. Minister Jan, they gather for prayer to cover this service. You don't have to be a minister. You don't have to have a collar on. All you need to be is in an agreement. God, move on our worship service. Have your way. Save somebody in our worship service. Perhaps you have an idea that I have not mentioned. Please tell me. Everybody's standing now. I want to know. It's been pressing on me. It's been really pressing on me. God, how can we have impact in this community? That's why he's putting me on, us on a fast next month. We, can, we are not, we've never been that church. We're not a church that just comes and have church. We're a church that comes and have impact in community. But let's do that together. Heads bow, eyes closed. Father, I have shared with the people what you have given me to say. I trust your Holy Spirit. That your word will not go out and return void, but it will accomplish what it is set forth to do. I pray, Lord, that your people, not because of what I've said, but what you have said through the words you have given me to say. That we will rise up, sacrifice some time, sacrifice energy, sacrifice, and serve. There will be some way, somehow, that we will reach somebody in this very difficult moment in the life of this community to have impact. You will be manifested by our hands and our feet and our words. This we pray in Jesus' name. If you're here for a second or third time, there's a gold card that was given to you or we like to give it to you now 
Just fill it out. I want to connect with this church. The way you connect with this church is make a decision. Just text the word decision to 71441. Just text the word decision to 71441. If you're watching right now, just text that word decision to 71441 connect with us. If you want to be engaged, if you want to get involved, if you want to make a difference, just a call, just a service. I asked about that. I did not want to imply in any way that you are not serving because you did not stand. I'm not saying that, please. Because many of you are serving already. But I really believe that God is calling us to a whole nother level of having impact because the only way that we get in he says enter in thy good and faithful servant you've been faithful over a few things I'm going to make you ruler over many PG2 is coming right now and um, to close us out. I know what you had mentioned before at the eight o'clock. Can we suspend that now? Um, no, this is gonna make an appeal for the um, anniversary the end of the month, but I, my spirit is so on a serving and have an impact. Amen. Amen. We're life changers. Who are we? And we're going to make disciples and change lives. That's who we are in our lifetime. Thank you, fellow. He's always on me. I love the fact that he, he engaged, okay? It's life changer. That's who we are. That's what God called us to be. PG2 is yours. Amen. Why don't we celebrate our fearless leader? Amen. And the word that God is always giving him. Beloved Bishop. Amen. That table that he's referring to is going to be the first table when you walk out of these doors here. So you want to go to that table and, and sign up. We're going to sign up, life changers and guests. We're going to sign up. Amen. Amen. That's a little weak. Yeah, I'm gonna sign <laughs> Let's sign up and, and corral around the vision that our bishop has just casted to us. Amen. So that we can be in collaboration with one another and collaboration and partnership with the spirit of the living God to change lives in our lifetime. October 22nd, women, y'all give it up. Women, women, October 22nd. Pink with a purpose is going down here. Pink with a purpose. First lady is going to be in the house. And you already know when she's in the house, there's always an am amazing and a mighty move of God. So you want to be in the house for that. I believe it's a Friday, right? Friday, Friday, October 22nd, 7 p.m. You'll want to be here for that. Also, third Sunday, if you have children, um, third Sunday, we do have children's ministry. Um, so you can bring your child here for that um, as there will be accommodations made for you. Finally, I will mention this. If you're a guest with us, I just want to remind you, you can come to the front. I will meet you here. Our bishop and first lady will also meet you here and we will be able to connect with you briefly uh, before you get to the restaurant. Um, amen. Because we know you got reservations at 1230. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Let us pray. Father, we thank you so much for the word that has gone forth. God, we thank you for giving us a charge to serve and a charge to give of our time, talent, and our treasure to the advancing of your kingdom in the earth. Lord, let us not be afraid to give of our skills and let us not be, let us not hold back and be stingy with our gifts. Let us, Father God, give that what you have given to us that, Lord, hope would be restored in our nation and in our communities because the solution and the answer to someone's prayer is in our hands. And so, God, we walk in that this afternoon. We love you and we thank you. If, we're, if you're in the sanctuary, we pray for your safe travel home and we pray for those that are watching 
that you would enjoy the rest of your day. It's in your precious son Jesus' name we pray and declare it done. Thank God and amen. Tell your neighbor, say, I'm getting ready to sign up. Come follow me. Thank <laughs> you.